shouldn't wave to it. That was dangerous, and some people still believe that. What would happen? And do, don't whistle to it. Then it coming down, take it. It would come and take you, so if you wave... Or it take you away from the ground, yes. Can you explain to me actually what it is? What's happening? It's fast particles, electric particles, coming in from space and hitting the top of the atmosphere. The energy of the particles is converted into light, and that's what we see. So they come from, from the sun? We can make a drawing. No, you do. You, you must do it, because you must show <laughs> we can, me. We yeah. can make a fast yeah. little drawing here. If you have the Earth here, yeah. and they're rotating an axis that way, so this is the night side. Night side, day side. I have the sun over here somewhere. From the sun is a, a tremendous wind blowing, called the solar wind. It will hit the Earth's magnetic field. It's basically a collision between the two. That's where this huge clash, yes. this battle is taking place. Yes. Compressing it. As Truls's drawing gets more complicated, I must admit I begin to panic slightly. Particle physics has never been my strong point. That's the magnetic field. But I do now understand that the Earth is a giant magnet and its north and south poles attract the electrically charged particles towards them with spectacular results. Like, you know, the moon and the sun and even a comet is covering over a small fraction of the sky. But it's not all lights. It's all the sky, from horizon to horizon. It's all over. So it's so grand that way. Truth, this is a book I had as a child when I was seven years old. And it had this drawing of the northern lights. Well, at least I think these are the southern lights, because here is a penguin and we don't have penguins. Yes, the penguin in the Antarctic I will see the same as you see here. For a drawing for a little child, is that a good drawing? Yes. It's a typical aurora that you are seeing. I think this is what I wanted to see all my life more than anything, is the curtain effect. It's a folded curtain hanging down from space, and the electrons coming down along the lines here. When it hit, hits this atmosphere, it will emit light. So this is a very correct drawing. Truth, I just hope I get a chance to see it. I hope that my one little green flash isn't the only glimpse I have of the aurora borealis. Yeah, I really hope you get a glimpse of it. Find a dark place with no disturbing light and then look for it. Just be patient. Keep looking. Yes. Keep looking. Don't When wave. it's clear sky, keep looking. They're waving at <laughs> No, none of that. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, I won't. Then it will take you away and keep you. <laughs> It's now or never to take Truls's advice. The weather near Tromsø is uncertain, but local guide Shettle Skurgli promises me we'll track down the lights, even if it takes till morning. I've just got to tell you, if you have a minute, what I've got on. I've got on um, two pairs of socks, one thick, one thin. I've got on, obviously, long johns. On top of that, thermal long johns and a vest, fleece trousers and salopettes, and then another top, which is that top that you can see. Then on top of that, another fleece. We're still only halfway there. Because then on top of this, I put on my heavy going freeze on the top of Everest mountain jacket. And on my feet, I've got ice fisherman's boots, which have got <laughs> soles about this big, fabulously warm. And I've got foot warmers pushed in there. And I've got hand warmers and then two pairs of gloves, two hats. And then on top of that, I shall put on a kind of life-saving suit without which you just simply die. So, That's good. The other one. This is okay. snug. It's not exactly what I'd wear to the Oscars, but you know. <laughs> I know. Horses no? with horses. That's lovely. You're well prepared now. Yes, that's good. Thank you. I can't see anything, Shuttle. No, it's, it's nothing yet, but it's good activity in the magnetic field tonight, so we just have to be patient. Okay, so just so, wait here. Yeah, you just wait here. Yeah. Good luck. Thanks, Shuttle. I stand in the pitch black by the side of the fjord and wait. Not much brighter there. Oh, something's happening there. Look up here. Look what 
What's happening here? We've got one, two, we've got three kind of bands, three falling curtains of green just curling round over the mountain. Look at that. Well, this is, this is a bit different from the green stripe that I glimpsed down at all. Standing here underneath this, I feel a little bit like the illustration of Pony the Penguin, who just stood humbly at the side, the little flippers down, just looking up. <sighs> this is the wonder of the world. This is it. I might just have to lie down and stare up at this. Oh, look at this! It just keeps changing and changing. I can't believe I'm seeing this. <laughs> it's fantastic. And it's come back again. I have been waiting all my life to see the Northern Lights. And now I'm seeing them on a scale that is beyond description. As happy as can be. <laughs> Look, it's starting. Just behind those little cottages, just below the moon and above the mountains. Look at that! <gasps> and all the way through it, you can see you can see stars shining through it. And this little moon is shining so brightly, and so it doesn't sort of seem to affect the moonlight. It's just oh, it's extraordinary. So exciting. It's so immense. This is the most astonishing thing I've ever, ever seen. I have a funny feeling it's sort of new. I know this sounds a bit mad. It actually does sound a bit mad. But it feels as though it knew that we wanted to see it so badly. And instead of just giving a little strip of light or a little bit of green, and I would have been so grateful for that, we've got the whole business. Terribly, terribly moving. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you. I think I can die happy now, actually. I don't intend to die just yet. But when I do die, I'll die happy. I was still alive in the morning and quite utterly, dazzlingly happy. My land journey north through Arctic Norway has ended in the best possible way. But I'm not going home. The strongest point on the compass still pulls me northwards. 
My final destination, far north across the Arctic Ocean, is the most northerly, permanently inhabited place on Earth. Spitsbergen is the largest island in the Svalbard archipelago, a vast wilderness of mountains, glaciers, and permafrost. It's a natural habitat for the polar bear, hardly so for people. This is Captain, let this temperature in Longyearbyen is minus 60 degrees Celsius. Welcome to use our off-site package.